e três. Hello, my name is Keith Kernich, and welcome to my tabletop. I've been on vacation lately, so I haven't had much time to do any painting, but I did have time to practice my sculpting and modeling in Blender a little bit. Today, I'd like to share with you my process for altering these lovely Titan Forge bases. First of all, it'd be nice if there was a spot to put a magnet, and for some reason, they didn't write my name on the bottom, so I think we'll have to fix that. If you look at this one here, you can see what I'm going for. First, I model the magnet. My magnets at the moment are 7mm by 2mm, so I make a cylinder that is 2.1mm high and has a 3.6mm radius. You need a little bit of extra space to make up for imperfections in printing. Next, I make a cylinder of the same height but wider. This is going to be the magnet holder, and I use a boolean modifier to remove the magnet space from it. If the magnet is at the exact same Z location as the holder, it can sometimes cause artifacts, as you can see here. So I move the bottom vertices down just a touch to fix that. To prepare the bases, I start by deleting all the faces on the bottom. Sometimes this leaves tiny hidden faces, which I'm looking for here, but didn't happen to find any this time. With all those faces removed, I can select all of the bottom vertices. They're not distributed perfectly around the circle, but there are enough that it seems to even out. Pressing F will put one big face between them all, nice and clean. I move the cursor to the current selection, which will be the median point between all of these selected vertices. I then move the object's origin to the cursor. I do the same thing with the magnet holder, so its origin is flush with the bottom of it. Then I move the cursor to the world's origin and then move the base and the magnet holder to the cursor, lining them up. Next, I want to model a disc that will be removed from the bottom of the base. This will save a little bit of resin, and leave space for the magnet holder. It gets centered in the same fashion as the base and the magnet holder. The bottom vertices are then scaled up to give it a nice taper, and moved down just a bit to avoid boolean artifacts. To write my name, I start by creating a circle object, which the name will wrap around. Next, I make a text object, and write my name with it. In the text Object Properties Data menu, I switch the font by clicking here. I switch the size down here, and assign it to the circle here. It also needs a little bit more space between each character. I hide the circle, then duplicate and hide the text in case I screw it up. I convert the copy to a mesh and extrude all faces by one unit. In sculpting mode, I use the re-mesh tool to make a more sensible geometry out of it, then give it a quick pass with the smooth tool to give it some softer edges. I move the text back so it's half inside the negative space disk, and use the union function of the boolean operator to join the two together. I add a boolean modifier to the base, selecting the negative space as the object to be removed, and then apply it. The magnet holder gets a bit of a reverse bevel, because I thought it would be a little bit stronger like that, and then gets joined to the base again with the union function of the boolean modifier. Then, you just repeat the process for the other bases of the same size. You'll notice that one of the bases had a little difficulty joining the magnet holder to it. To fix that, I just moved the highest vertices on the magnet holder up a little bit so they would better intersect with the base, and that did the trick. When complete, Blender has a batch export option in its STL exporter that I use to make an STL file for each base. Writing your name in there like that does require some extra support in Chi2Box, but instead of doing them the same four times, I just do it once and copy those supports to the others. This base is actually a different one from the 32mm base you just saw, 
it is actually a 40mm base that has undergone the same process, I just had a better time filming this one. The supports are pretty standard. I use a bunch of small ones, first to get all the difficult bits on the lettering, and then move them to a more sensible arrangement, before coming back with heavy ones to support the weight of it. Then under File, hit Save As, and save it as an STL file. Back in Blender, I import the STL, and the STL files for the other three bases of the same size. First, I hide all the other ones so they aren't in my way. On the base with supports, I select this ring of vertices on the bottom of the magnet holder, and use Move Cursor to select it to center it between them. Then, I move the origin of the object to the cursor, though I didn't actually need to do that, just having the cursor there is good enough. For the other three, their origins are already centered where we left them. We need to rotate them 45 degrees on the x-axis, and use Move Selected to Cursor to align them with the supported base. For whatever reason, Chi2Box rotated the other base a little bit along the y-axis. When rotating, if you press the Y key twice, it will restrict rotation along the local Y axis, so you can line them up nicely. In edit mode, I press L to select all the linked vertices of the base, then press Command I to invert the selection, selecting all the supports instead. I then duplicate this, separate it into its own object, and duplicate that object twice more. Those three objects are then joined to the meshes of the other three bases to become their supports. Make sure to check carefully that all the supports are actually intersecting their bases. When confident that they are, you can again use Blender's batch mode when exporting STLs. Now, we're not quite done. Some of those bases had things on top that may need supporting too. I probably should have thought of this at the beginning. Just rotating them a little at the start could have minimized that, and trying to add supports to an object that already has supports as part of its object data can be kind of irritating. but that done, you are ready to print. Here's how a few of mine turned out. I think I might have liked to have used larger lettering than I did on the 32mm bases, because the lettering on this 40mm base turned out really nice. The magnet barely fit though. It isn't glued in, it's just kind of stuck there. It sits pretty flush though, so I guess that works well enough. So, what do you think? Would you write your name in the bottom of every single miniature? Or would you perhaps give them each their own individual names? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, then consider like and subscribing. Thanks for watching.